In this video, we want to show that the function x squared, that is with inputs coming from the real numbers, is not uniformly continuous. So what does it mean to be uniformly continuous? Well, if we wanted to prove that it were uniformly continuous, we would want to show that for every epsilon greater than zero, there would be some delta greater than zero, such that for all real numbers x and y, we could show that if x and y were closer to each other than delta, then x squared and y squared would be closer to each other than epsilon, right? That's what we would want to show if we wanted to show that x squared were continuous, but it, it's, or were uniformly continuous rather, but it's not. So what we want to show, we want to negate that. We don't want that. We want to show the following. We want to show that there exists some epsilon greater than zero such that for all delta greater than zero, there is some x and y, some real numbers x and y, such that x and y are closer to each other than delta, but still x squared minus y squared, the distance between those two is still greater than or equal to epsilon. So we want to prove that. Now, it's not immediately apparent how we would define our epsilons and x's and y's so that this would work out. But there is a sort of a standard form that you can follow in this case. We would just say something like this. We would say, uh, let epsilon be equal to something. Now, we don't know what yet, but maybe we can figure that out in the course of our calculations. And then, of course, we would let delta just be greater than zero. And let's take this over here to the side. That, those were just some notes. Now, for x and y, again, we have no idea what to do, but we do have a good way of making x and y close to each other. We could just say that x is the same thing as y is, but just, let's say, delta over 2 bigger than that, so half of delta bigger. So with it, we know when we subtract that, that they will at least be closer uh, than delta. We still won't know what's going to go on with x squared and y squared, of course, but at least we could accomplish that. So let's just try that. We'll say, let y be equal to something. We'll leave that open. And we'll let x be equal to whatever y is plus delta over 2. Then we have, now let's see what that would give us. x minus y would just be, let's just sub in for x. That would be y plus delta over 2. And then we would be subtracting y, which would just give us delta over 2, which of course is a positive number, so we don't need these absolute value signs. Okay, well, that's taken care of then. We at least know that these two are close to each other. And now, if we continue to calculate, maybe we can figure out some good values for what have we not defined yet, y and epsilon. So let's try that. We'll say x squared minus y squared is equal to, and that's what we'll just sub in, y plus delta over 2. Now, of course, we don't know if this is going to work. Uh, minus y squared, but at least we can get started by just diving in and maybe something will uh, will turn out. Let's see, so if we multiply that out, we would have y squared plus 2 delta over 2y plus delta squared over 4, right? I'm just multiplying this out minus y squared, which all together would, okay, so the y squareds are going to fall away, and these twos cancel out, so that would just give us delta y 
plus delta squared over 4. Okay, now maybe we're far enough along so that we can figure out what we need to do. We can't do anything with delta squared over 4. We also can't use the value for delta in defining our epsilon, at least. Uh, we could use it for our x and y, since at that point it's already been defined. But, uh, but there's no place here for us to change anything. We just have to concentrate our efforts on this part here. If that part right here could be equal to epsilon, then we know this whole thing would at least be greater than or equal to epsilon. So let's just set this equal to epsilon. We'll go off to the side here. We'll just say delta y is equal to epsilon. If we divide by delta, and we do know delta is not 0, then we would get uh, y is equal to epsilon divided by delta. Right? It's just a bit of a change of form here. OK, so we know what y would have to be. So let's just say epsilon divided by delta. And if we do sub that in, then we have delta epsilon divided by delta plus delta squared over 4. OK, so the deltas are going to cancel out. We get our epsilon. So then we just have epsilon deltas and 4s. OK, well, that's all positive. So we have epsilon plus delta squared over 4, which obviously is greater than or equal to epsilon. And with that, we are finished. Uh, we haven't actually even given a value for epsilon. It turns out that uh, we could use any value uh, at all. Let's just say that epsilon is equal to 1. And uh, there we are. There you have it. We just dove in. And a lot of times it's like this. If you follow this standard form, you define what you need to define. You let be something uh, just uh, arbitrary here, like the delta, if it, if it needs to be. You calculate a little further, and a lot of times it will just turn out, and in this case it did.